Russia is skirting NATO's red line, representatives of the alliance become a military target. Russia's alleged satellite signal jamming of a military aircraft carrying the British Defence Minister would, if confirmed, be Moscow's latest flirtation with a hard NATO red line, the safety of Allied leaders. According to Newsweek, Grant Shapps was returning from a visit to observe NATO military drills in Poland when interference occurred close to the Russian Baltic exclave of Kaliningrad, a strategic and heavily militarized location known as an electronic warfare hub. The interference lasted around 30 minutes, blocking cell and internet connection and forcing the aircraft to revert to alternative location technologies. An unnamed British Defence Ministry source told The Times that the Royal Air Force is well prepared to deal with this, but suggested such measures put an unnecessary risk on civilian aircraft and could potentially endanger people's lives. The incident, the source added, was wildly irresponsible on Russia's part. However, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's spokesperson downplayed concerns. It didn't threaten the safety of the aircraft, and it is not unusual for aircraft to experience GPS jamming near Kaliningrad, which is of course Russian territory, they said. The Shaps incident is not the first, nor even the most serious, occasion on which a NATO member minister has potentially been endangered by Russian military activity. Just last month, a Russian missile struck Odessa while Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis was visiting the port city of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The missile fell somewhere between 700 and 1,600 feet of the Greek leader, according to multiple reports. Killing or wounding a NATO leader would not automatically trigger the alliance's Article 5 Collective Defense Clause. While allies agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all, members must agree to invoke Article 5. NATO's founding document notes that any military assistance must be given in accordance with their respective constitutional processes, meaning the agreement of national decision-making bodies. U.S. to manufacture long-range missiles for HIMARS in Australia for needs of Ukraine. The United States plans to open the first foreign factory in Australia for the production of guided multiple launch rocket systems for the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System for Reactive Salvo Fire Systems. The ammunition will be directed to the needs of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, informs the Wall Street Journal. The source notes that Lockheed Company plans to hire six Australian engineers to prepare and launch production. The decision was made because the US defense industry cannot meet demand and quickly replenish rocket stocks. The rapid consumption of munitions in Ukraine and the Middle East, from missiles to artillery shells, has strained the ability of the US industrial base to meet demand and replenish depleted stocks. The Biden administration is seeking to develop multiple production lines across allied nations for critical weapons, though that isn't easy, writes the Wall Street Journal. Australian officials note that the first batch of 12 GMLRS rockets is planned to be tested by the end of 2025, and by 2030, the country expects to produce thousands of ammunition annually. Obstacles to the implementation of the plan may include a shortage of personnel, transportation difficulties, and a deficit of necessary production components. Rocket production is planned at a military base on the outskirts of Sydney. The publication emphasizes that this is the first plant outside the US to produce such weapons. GMLRS rockets are manufactured by the American company Lockheed Martin. They are equipped with a satellite guidance system and can hit targets up to 80 kilometers away. On March the 12th, the United States announced a new package of assistance to Ukraine worth $300 million. Among other items, it includes artillery shells and GMLRS rockets for HIMARS. Lithuania's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Gabrielos Landsbergis, stated that Ukraine needs not 40 but 400 HIMARS launchers to win the war against Russia. Previously, the U.S. tested new rockets for the HIMARS rocket artillery systems. In the morning of March 14, the Graveroy district of the Belgorod region of Russia opened fire from the territory of Ukraine. The Russian press reported on this. It is said that one of the shells fell into the forensic examination building. The population was warned to go to shelters. The governor of Belgorod region, Gyatislav Gladkov, said that one person was injured as a result of the shooting. 
He also said that three cars were damaged and several houses were damaged. A warning was issued about the missile safety in the Belgorod area. The IT should be noted that on March 13, the Free Russian Legion, the Russian Volunteer Corps, and the Siberian Battalion, which are part of the Ukrainian army, warned that they would again enter the territory of Belgorod in course and conduct an operation. They demanded the provincial administration to evacuate the local population. Oh, ладно, побежал я людям помогать.